What's going on guys, TCG Guide here. In this archetype analysis, we're going to have a look at one of my favorite archetypes, Christrons. Christrons is an archetype that you can easily play on a budget, with the most expensive card being about 3 bucks. But since they have next to no support, you'll need to run a few cards along with your main Christron lineup. I'll talk about some of those choices at the end of the video, but to start things off, let's look at the tuners since this is a synchro heavy archetype. The Christron tuners all have a neat effect where they synchro on your opponent's turn. Christron Quan, Citri, and Rion are your three tuners to work with. Christron Quan is the level 1 tuner, and like the other two, he has 500 attack and 500 defense, and his quick synchro effect lets you pull a non tuner from your hand and special summon it and then synchro using Christron Quan and the monster you just special summoned. The issue with Christron Quan and the other main deck tuners is when you use their effects, you can only synchro summon machine type monsters, so your extra deck is a little limited. Christron Citri is the level 2 tuner for this archetype, and it is way more useful than Quan, and actually more useful than Rion 2, since Christron Citri pulls a monster out of the grave to synchro with, and after you use those two as material, they get banished instead of going to the graveyard. This is a really awesome part of Citri's effect. Even though banishment is usually the end for cards, Christrons have a way of coming back. One of them, as you've probably already guessed, is the last tuner, Christron Rion. Yep, his synchro effect gets you a monster from banishment this time, and then once the synchro is done, you shuffle both Rion and whatever card you got from Banishment back into the deck. It's nice to see a green archetype for a change, one that actually knows how to recycle. The non-tuner monsters for Christrons are also pretty similar to each other. They all have a Lone Fire Blossom-like effect, where you can target a face-up card you control and destroy it, then special summon a Christron tuner from the deck. They also each have their own effect in the grave, letting you banish them to set up for more plays. Christron Prasiordal is the first of the non-tuners, and he's got 800 attack and 2000 defense, which isn't bad for a level 2. Since it is level 2, it's going to get used a lot in your synchro plays. Its graveyard effect is pretty good too, since it special summons a Christron monster from your hand. This is one that is almost definitely a 3 of, 2 at the very least. Next up is Christron Smiger. Smiger isn't as useful for Synchros since, since he's level 3, but his graveyard effect makes him a 3 of for sure. When you banish Smiger, you can get yourself any Christron spell or trap from your deck. Christron Thistfern is the other level 3 non-tuner, and isn't quite as useful but can still set up a lot of plays for you. Its graveyard effect gets you a Christron monster from your deck to your hand, letting you set up for your next setup. Christron Rosenex is the only level for it and is much, much less useful than the others. When you banish Rosenex from the graveyard, it gets you a level 1 monster that you can use for your synchros, but that doesn't help as much as it seems since with Christrons you can only use one effect per turn. Either you use its effect on the field or in the grave, you can't do both in one turn. Of course, there's always the exception that proves the rule, and in that case we have Christron Sulfethner. So Fefner is 100% 3 of. This level 5 will start so many of your combos, I wouldn't even think of running less. You can special summon Sofefner from your hand or grave by sending a Christron card from your hand to the grave. Then once he's been special summoned, you have to target a monster you control and destroy it. Don't have anything you want to destroy? That's okay, because if Sofefner is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon a Christron monster from your deck. Sulfefner sets up your grave when you special summon it, Sulfefner sets up your field when it gets destroyed, and what's more, Sulfefner will do it all in one swift shot. Have I explained enough of how great this card is yet? It can also be tribute summoned if you end up going up against monarchs or other decks that punish special summons. This is a synchro heavy archetype, so naturally there will be some extra deck monsters too. First up, Christron Quandax. This is the main synchro tuner you'll be using, but there are others you can run alongside Quandax. 1800 attack and 2000 defense for this level 4, and just like all the other tuners in the Christron lineup, 
Quandax synchros on your opponent's turn. This time though, you don't have to synchro into a machine type, so keep that in mind for your synchro plays. If Quandax gets destroyed before you have a chance to synchro with him, which shouldn't happen very often, you can special summon a non-synchro Krishtron monster from your grave. Krishtron Amitrix is the next synchro monster from your extra deck, and with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, it's no laughing matter, especially since Amitrix switches all special summon monsters your opponent controls to defense position when it's synchro summoned. And it too gets you a non-synchro Krishtron if it's destroyed. Now with Phoenix, we're starting to see this archetype's power. Krishnan Phoenix is a level 9 synchro monster that requires one tuner synchro monster and one or more non-tuner synchros. But it's well worth the effort since when you do get to synchro summon this bad boy, you can banish all spells and traps your opponent controls and in their graveyard. That is insane power. Not to mention his 2800 attack and 2000 defense. This effect stops so many strategies and with that big of a body, Phoenix is really hard to roll over. Christron Phoenix can be killed however, and if it is, you can special summon any monster from your graveyard as a symbol for all your hard work. The last synchro monster we're going to look at is Christron Corion Gandrax. If you thought Phoenix was a powerhouse, just wait till you check this guy out. Corion Gandrax is another level 9 synchro. But this time you need two or more tuners and one or more non-tuner monster to make it. But when you do, oh god, when you do. When you synchro summon this bad mofo, you banish monsters from your opponent's field and or grave up to the number of materials used for the synchro summon, so almost always three. Add to that a 3k body and we'll call it a day. But that can't be where they left off, nope. If Corian Gandrax is destroyed, you can target a banished monster and special summon it. I've mentioned that Christrons don't have a lot of support at the beginning of the video, and really, they've got almost nothing to work with. What they do have is Crystallic Potential, an unsearchable field card that lets you draw a card for each Christron monster you synchro summon this turn during the end phase. And it's not that bad, but it's not that great either. If you need a field card, I'd recommend Starlight Junction, since it adds to the disruption this deck already has going for it. There are two other support cards that can be searched with Smiger's effect, and the first, and by far the least important, is Christron Entry. This trap is situational at best, since you have to have a Christron Tuner in your hand and one in the graveyard in order to activate it, so I'd say one at the most, and the one would just be for its effect in the grave that lets you change a monster's level for the turn to help with your Synchro Summons. And lastly, we've got Christron Impact. Not only does this get you a monster back from banishment helping you to keep your plays going, but it also changes all monsters your opponent controls defense to zero. But wait, there's more. If it's already been used and it's just sitting in the grave, you can banish it to negate an effect that targets a Christron monster you control and destroy that card. This alone is worth running Smiger at 3. Since this archetype is so small, there are other cards that you can run to speed your deck up. The first is a card that single-handedly sets up a lot of what you need to make your plays, and that's Scrap Recycler. Scrap Recycler is amazing in this deck. All you do is normal summon him and send Sulfefner to the grave, and you can almost always end your turn with a well set up board that can disrupt your opponent and get you one of your bigger synchros. Or if you already have Sulfefner in your hand, you can send another one of your Christron monsters since they all have relevant effects in the grave. What if you could activate your Christron effects on the field and keep them alive after? Well, that's where cards like Different Dimension Deep Sea Trench and Smoke Grenade of the Thief come in. Trench lets you banish a water type monster from your hand, field, or grave, and when it's destroyed, special summon that monster. Grenade, on the other hand, works right along with the disruption strategy the deck has going for it. Ties of the Brethren is another good card to slot in, and it's almost an engine in and of itself. If you start with this and have a way to get a level 3 out, you can go right into Corian Gandrax. Over in the extra deck, since there are only 4 Christron Synchros, you'll need to fill some space here too. Formula Synchron and Excel Synchron can both be used very nicely since they're both machine type Synchro monsters. They fit into the summoning restrictions this deck has. And just like Corian Gandrax, 
These synchro tuners can synchro summon on your opponent's turn. They both also help the deck in terms of flexibility. They don't have any restrictions on what they can synchro into and formula draws a card when you summon it. And Excel lets you change its level to make synchroing that much easier. Super Heavy Samurai Stealth Ninja is another good pick since it can attack in defense position and it has a pretty big body at that. If it gets destroyed by card effect, you can special summon it from the grave in the next standby phase. Oh, and this probably won't ever be the case, but if you have no spells or traps in your grave, Stealth Ninja can attack directly by having its defense. Trishula is a must. Not only does Trish banish from the hand, field, and grave, but Trish has almost the exact same requirements as Quarion Gandrax, and there's more than a few ways to get one of those two out on your opponent's first turn. Lastly, if you decide you want to run some XYZ monsters, you should probably consider Cyber Dragon Nova and Infinity. Nova is worthless except to send out Infinity in this deck, but Infinity can lock your opponent out pretty hard just by removing one material, and on top of that, Infinity gets an attack boost for each material on it, and it can add more material on it on each of your turns. Well, that pretty much does it for this archetype analysis. If you've played this archetype, be sure to let me know what you thought of it, or if this is your first time checking out Christians, tell me if they seem like something you'd want to use in your playgroup. Thank you so much for watching, and tune in next time to see the archetype analysis of the dreaded Predaplants. Of course, the best way to know when that's happening is by subscribing, and if you'd like to support the channel, consider giving this video a like, it really does help a ton. This has been TCG Guide, and as always, have a great day guys.